Hi everyone, Scrappy Kathy here, and welcome to the Dog Days of Summer. This is a special hop uh, brought to you by the Scrappy Inspiration YouTube Hop Group. And um, uh, uh, I've been really looking forward to scrapping this photo. I printed it big for a challenge last week and didn't uh, get it scrapped. Wasn't actually sure what I was going to do with it until I saw, I was, I was, uh, kind of trolling around for a um, uh, layout to lift from the Mind the Scrap um, libraries uh, because that's a requirement for this week's challenge with the uh, Mind the Scrap Summer Challenge. And this one by Sarah Costain, otherwise known as Manxie Cat Crafts, um, <clears throat> caught my eye back when, it, when she first uh, published it, and I was just fascinated by all of the different little elements in the sky, not just the stars, but there are different types of splatters, and there's the occasional enamel dot, and, you know, it, uh, it's just it, it, this kind of, uh, and the anything uh, on black, I, I just really love. So, instead of a happy family page, I'm going to do a hairy dog page. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna, I've, I've pulled this scrap, I've torn a scrap of color study to add the, the color in. I think I'm gonna use it this way. And I'm gonna mount the dog here and have some embellishments there, but I want a, uh, kind of um, a swath of stars going diagonally and kind of around the field. So I'm going to do some beforehand, and then I will probably add in uh, a lot uh, after the fact, after I get the photo on so that I can compose exactly the arrangement of stars around the photo. So I have this stencil, and I have, I have a brand new bo um, jar of Creative FX Iridescent Glaze from Vicky, Vicky Booten. And Vicky herself sent this to me. Isn't that exciting? I ordered it from her website. And um, my other one had dried out. I didn't have much left in it anyway. So I'm going to, I, I pulled the, the little sealer off of it. And there's enough on there to kind of paint some stars on and I'm just going to use a brush. I'm not going to scrape it. It's a texture paste that could be scraped, but I'm just going to kind of do this. And because it's iridescent, it's not going to change the color of anything. It's just going to make the spot that I put it a little bit shiny. And that's kind of what you want with the stars. And I'm just going to do a few just so as not to waste this. And if you haven't ever used her glazes before, they're just a kind of a dimensional latex paint. And the iridescent is so beautiful on top of other colors. And you can see with the paintbrush, it's not getting a sharp, clear image. And that's okay with me. Um, I'm kind of just putting them out there almost as a background for other stars. And I'll show you in a minute all the, the different kinds of stars I have. And I'm kind of crossing over myself here to get these on. And I'm just kind of dabbing them. And they'll probably be, um, I'll probably cover up the messy parts. Um, let me do a little tiny one down here. You probably won't even be able to tell that's a star, but it'll just be a little shiny spot. Let me do another small one, small-ish one up here, and I just have barely have enough left on my brush to get that one done. So that should dry very quickly, and this I have not wasted that paint, so that's exciting. <laughs> I love that stuff so much. 
And I have another product here that I have never used, and I'm embarrassed to say that. It came several months ago in a mixed media kit from Mind the Scrap. And it is a pour art embellishment, P-O-U-R. And I think it's used in pouring, um, I don't know, resin or whatever it is that people pour and put things inside of. And, but it's not been used like that by the folks on Mind the Scrap who have used it. I'm going to wet this brush so that it's not so hard to clean. And I'm just gonna put it aside because I don't wanna leave the video to go to the kitchen or the little bathroom. Um, anyway, it, it's, these are, it's like little tiny iridescent flakes of um, plastic, like, like clear iridescent plastic. And I thought if I just put them on a little bit like I would put on sequins, I thought that might add something. So I'm gonna try one right now just to see if I like it. And if so, I could actually kind of work it in in conjunction with these. So for a second, I would put a dot of glue down and then I would pick it up with a tweezer and then kind of lay it down. It's sort of, um, that's a messy one. There are some um, nicer looking ones in here. I don't think I had enough glue or that kind of picked up all the glue. This may not be an experiment that I want to repeat, but I, I will have to look at, I have not done a good job of looking at the videos of people who have used it. So that actually just gives kind of a messy iridescence there, and I do like it, so I will use some more. But first, let's get, well, I'll show you kind of what I'm working with here. I have this set of sequin stars, including these outline stars, I use those. These are from Redefine Creative as part of a Creative Cuts Club um, project. And I used a couple on a layout that went live today, but this is gonna be in a completely different album, so it doesn't bother me to use those again so soon. This is a set of sequins that I got at my local scrapbook shop and it, they're called cotton candy sequins. And they just sold them in this little package, but they're like little circles with serrated edges. It, it, just really cool looking and, and they're iridescent and they reflect. And this is a set of sequins designed by Spiegel Mom Scraps exclusively for Redefine Creative. And inside this mix, there are purple ones and, and several others, but there's a white one that's kind of concentric rings, and it gives a really good look on black. So I've chosen those. I have taken a, well, as you know, I'm really in love with these neon uh, perspectives from um, Bramble Fox, and I'm going to use this kind of a neon pink uh, word unique as the title. I have taken a, my little bit, I don't have much left of this vellum uh, star sheet from Vicki Booten's um, Let's Wander collection, but I've cut a few stars from there. Um, I have done a, um, this is a, um, uh, a jelly plate print and it's kind of cleaning stuff off of my gel plate and I kind of like it so I scanned it and I'm gonna maybe mess around with it a little bit on my computer digitally to see what what I can get out of it and and I may make a 12 by 12 paper out of it 
I will probably make a 12 by 12 paper out of this part of it because it has some interesting colors here. This pattern right in through here was made by laying down uh, some jute uh, lace. Uh, 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 I have a thing of jute ribbon lace that's kind of got that pattern. And so that, that's what they, it didn't take really well, but I kind of like with all the trash that was left on my gel plate, it kind of had some interesting colors, including some of some iridescent, um, it's prism glaze, which isn't sold anymore. And it's in that beautiful, um, teal color. So I cut some hearts and stars out of this to put on there. And that's just typing paper. It's just copy paper. So it's not very thick. I've pulled this, if you'll notice in um, Sarah's, she's got these florals kind of on either end. I'm gonna, gonna think I cut this floral in half and kind of try to work it in. So that satisfies my cut file. Uh, of course, all of these die cuts work. And I've got some, um, some dotty about flare flares and you know so these things will find their way on there i think so this should be nice and dry right now i'm going to lay this down flat um let me get this and things ought to go fairly quickly from here I started to just use my um, white pen to go through that star stencil. I think I want this way because I, I like the fact that it points up there. Okay, so I placed those. Um, I want that to be parallel to here because I'm going to line up the photo cutoff. Reese's backside there. So I wanted to line it up against that. And I'm going to put some foam behind her. And I don't have it here. Well, I probably will handwrite it, I guess. Um, we have to include the word fun. One of the rules of this week's challenge is include the word fun in your title or your journaling. So I'm going to do some journaling talking about the fact that she is a, uh, a bundle of fur and fun. Although I guess technically on a dog, that's really hair. And um, the kids uh, get after their dad. She's not very well trained, so she's not a very polite puppy. <laughs> and some of that is due to the fact that there was no, um, she was, her dad got her for Ava uh, when, when Ava was first diagnosed. And um, she was just, she brought a, a, a happy light into a, an otherwise dismal, dreadful, horrible situation. And she's been a great member of the family, but <laughs> I think at least twice or three times a day, somebody regrets <laughs> the choice there. So I'm going to somewhat um, obscure the fact that this is such a cutoff there. So I'm going to put this on, like I said, this is very thin paper, but I'm going to go ahead and glue it. And this is the inside of this uh, Rosie Studio um, heart die. I'm going to use that someplace else, maybe over here in conjunction with the, the flower. But I thought I would do this flare there. I'm going to need to prop it up a little bit on foam um, just 
so that the flare doesn't weigh it down. That kind of was what was bothering me there. Um, that's not, well, yeah, that's going to get hidden. So I can do that. I'm not being very um, precise about that because I think it's going to be hidden. I hope it's going to be hidden. And then I have a large, one of the larger stars. Okay, so I kind of want it hanging off a little bit that way so you can see that it's a heart shape. You can't tell that little hole is cut out of it. So that works. And maybe I could actually layer this sort of like that. We'll see how how things turn out. So I'm going to get this star and kind of run it along this way. And because it's vellum, it'll curl up if I leave the glue too wet. So I'm going to make it, um, I'm going to kind of just make it tacky by, um, you know, really complicated process of smearing it with my fingers. Okay, and that should work right there. And it stands up a little bit, and because it's vellum, it's very light, and it should stay up. So the next thing I'm going to do is try to work this in. Whoops, I lost the middle of my rose, and that can be used as a cut file on something else. I may just sneak it in. Under here, kind of like that. And I'll do the other one up by her ear there. I started to put the, some stars down first so that there might be some stars underneath the cut file, but then I thought that would actually be kind of busy and distracting, and, you know, heaven forbid that I should do a layout that was busy and distracting. Never, um, never heard of such a thing. <laughs> You're all laughing right now because all of my layouts tend to be busy and distracting. Okay, so this is going to go here, and there will be uh, one of those iridescent stars there. So, next thing I want to be sure to do is my... Um, the reason I wanted her backed up to that orange strip was because I wanted this yellow flare to kind of fit right in here on top of that yellow strip. I actually did, you know, five minutes of planning before doing this. Um, I love Sarah's layout so much. Okay, there, and then I can do some, some fun things. In fact, one of the fun things I may do is layer this part of a star kind of right under there and take a little bit. And these, um, all of the flares I'm using are um, older releases, so they'll be in the Dottie About Flare uh, shop, and you, Adam's organizing a website to make it easier to order. I like this, and think it might be cute somewhere, maybe right there, or... We'll see. I'll just kind of put it off to the side. I know I want this to be the title, and I want there to be room, and I like that the E and the period end up there. And again, I'm, I'm doing all this, putting the bigger things on 
so that I make sure I have room for them before I put the small things on. The tiny embellishments, as Christina calls them. Okay, pressing that down, and that should die. Now, I have the next larger things I have are some more of these vellum stars. And I'm going to, let me see if I can get a, a bit of foam underneath. This green one is a little bit darker than some of the other colors, and it's a little bit, um, the, you know, the colors are a little bit mottled, I guess I want to say. I'm going to do that maybe down here. I don't have a lot of these, and... Okay, let's see, one more with foam. And I wanna be sure that I get them on before I start putting the little you know, sequins, the small, tiny elements. I'm gonna put that one there, kind of associated with that one. This next one, I don't know if it's dark enough for this not to show. But I'm going to pretend that that doesn't matter. Okay. It's going to show a little bit. It's actually kind of showing a little bit on there. And I'm not going to really be too upset. This one I'm going to put flat. Um, kind of tucked in right behind her. It's already curled a little bit. I put a little bit of um, glue on it and didn't roll it out. I, I kind of want to see if it curls up too much, I can always glue it down. Let's see, where else do I need one? I could probably use another one right in here, and I'll have it down. Okay, now I have another flare that I've got those two there. So this one may be right here. And then I could put a star on it, one of those um, neon perspectives, because it's just a, kind of a neutral black and white. Flare. Kind of move it down a little bit. And let's see, I think I like the pink one on there more than the orange one. I'll put the orange one maybe right here and somewhat kind of shadow that or let that star be its shadow. So, whoops, I didn't peel the back of this one. I try to get that done uh, before I film, but I don't always get both sides. Okay, there. Now I'll put this one down because that one I got both sides. I'll do that, and then I can put something tiny right there. Okay, now I'm going to take some of my um, stars from or stars and hearts from the um, gel print. And these, what I liked about them is they, they, have, they pick up this yellow. I've got a lot of yellow going on in here. And they, and, and it kind of looks grungy. It gives a, a grungy look that seems appropriate for a page about a grungy dog. 
and she's beginning that we you know at the beginning of hot weather here we had her um shaved and her little you know face was trimmed and so forth and she's beginning to get this look this picture was taken before that so i'm gonna put this one maybe up here no particular rhyme or reason to things i just want a nice distribution diagonally and kind of uh hugging the photo cluster um nothing uh particularly exotic and if you know me <laughs> you know that i probably will destroy any semblance of design because i'll see some cute place that something needs to go um do that there and I'll do one more over up at the top and then I've got some other little things um, I don't want it too close to this the heart there but you know that's actually the best place for it so I'll put that there this heart is very flimsy even with that coat of paint on it from the gel print um and i'm not how about if it just sneaks up under there maybe comes out from under Okay, I don't hate that. And I kind of want to bring some more of that grungy gel print into the composition. So let me do this. Kind of sneak that under. And press that down. And I'll let this curl up. I'll maybe curl that to go, kind of go with it. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little glue on there and glue it to that. So that as it curls up, which it will, it'll lift this with it. Okay, now I have another heart. And I can maybe do this one like that. So it's sort of overlaying that one. I like that. And then I've got this little crystal that's kind of got some iridescence to it that could go there too. This was... Um, I think this is from um, Pineapple Crafts. It was part of a, a little bonus that I got in a, well, I had ordered some stuff. Never mind. I got it from Scrappy Adam. <laughs> so thank you, Scrappy Adam. <laughs> and Okay, I'm going to put this here. Okay, now we're down to the sequins and the splatters. I'm going to do the splatters last. I have every possible color of um, uh, shiny, um, shimmery spray. I've got a lime green, a uh, mint aqua, a hot pink, and... I'm out of the Heidi uh, Shine Gold, so I have some Jen Hadfield, and we'll kind of play with that later. Oops, I found a tiny little star, the star that came out of here, and it needs to go someplace, right? I'm thinking maybe right here. And it's that grungy Print. I've still got this little kind of curly cue, which is cute to me. 
So I'm gonna stick it down right there. Can't waste a cute little piece of a cut file. Christina will be very proud. Okay, I'm gonna take a couple of these outline stars, kind of work them into the swath, and I'll use the silver ones. I'm trying to find where this opens. I had the same problem yesterday. I'm gonna use silver outline ones and a couple of blue ones. And of course, putting them down on, um, well, I've got a solid one and a blue one. Let's, let's just go with that. I don't want um, just the whole passel of these. Um, but I'm going to put them in the um, in the diagonal swath. Whoops, that went on. Kind of there. And I'm going to use a solid one down here. Maybe up there, and I've got tiny blue ones. I'm going to put a couple tiny ones down here in conjunction with this little tiny stenciled one done with the iridescent glaze. And It doesn't, the color doesn't show up well on the black, but the shimmer ought to. And I'm gonna do a little cluster of three, kind of right there. And we'll finish off with some round sequins and a bunch of splatters. A little too much glue there but it will dry clear and maybe it won't matter. Now, as I'm putting these other things on, I'm liking these iridescent glaze. My idea of putting it on with a paintbrush might not have been the best, but I can kind of Use some sequins to and then I've got some more of this stuff that I want to put on. Let me do a sequin right there. And that's either gonna draw attention to the mess or it's going to offset it and you be the judge. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna tell you how I feel about it. It's, but I'm doing it anyway because the placement is right. It's in that diagonal swath. I need to kind of reinforce that and I hope, hopefully I can do that with my splatters. and these, the rest of the sequins that I'm gonna do there. And let me kind of do one up here to kind of get the idea that it started from there. Okay, I've got a sequin with a little, I'll show you, I can turn you upside down and put you on. there. These just really sparkle to me. I've not used them enough. To be honest, I forgot about them until I reorganized my sequence the other day because they had gotten into a, a terrible mess. So 
So I want this to kind of look like it's going kind of sweeping this way. And I'm assuming I can journal on top of this little torn uh, piece. I'm going to try to keep that open for journaling. So this, the bottom part seems to be shaped better. That's another one I have to turn upside down. Seems to be shaped better and it's not, still not sticking. Okay, um, let me get, I'll leave some of those in the tray and I'll pour out some of these and pull these circles. These are so cool. But because they're ridged, they don't necessarily stick. I'm going to put one here. We'll use a lot of these. There's some little iridescent, silvery looking ones that might be cool in there too. But I thought I'd use three. of the circle-y ones on this top part. And two down here. I'm really a lot happier with the, uh, see if that goes better. But using these, what I would consider upside down with the cup um, facing down is actually working out better. That's not exactly where I want that to go. Let me use a different type of sequin there. I want this one it kind of needs to be not in line. <laughs> I don't care where it is. I just don't want it in, in a line. I'm going to do it kind of up here and sneak it under Reese's paw there. That's good. Whoops, it's stuck to the tweezers instead of the paper. Okay, what's the problem there? Okay, now I'm going to add a couple of these, especially up at the top where I'm trying to reinforce this shape. If I were to draw a line, I'd want it to be kind of like that. So it seems like this needs to be at the edge of that line. that one here. It's, I'm not the best at sequin placement because I tend to want them everywhere. Oh, they'd be cute right there. And I tend to lose any, um, you know, design shape that I may have had in mind. Okay, I'm gonna let that be there, and now I'm gonna go do a few of those um, little uh, iridescent plastic flakes around, again, to kind of fill in the swath of of um, sequins. And 
and I have to remember that I, I, I put that close by, but I've got room over here too. Let me put these away before I lose them. I think we're done. I'm a little bit concerned about this star kind of being out there by itself and this one by right here, but that's kind of, I think, I'm gonna put a few of these on the tray. I don't know if you can see that. Let me check and make sure that the camera hasn't moved. Let me move this over a bit and move this over a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna do a spot right here. And then see if I can pick out a piece that's shiny and an okay little shape. I like that. Let's see. Here's a small one. That just really shines. I'm gonna turn this around and place a few in here. I'm gonna do one here and one here even though those are in line. And maybe one here and one here. I'm just gonna kind of fill it up with these because I really like the shine. And they kind of look like um, celestial trash, you know? <laughs> kind of like the the real stuff that's out there and science fiction movies have falling to earth every now and then. Okay. Um, here's another piece right there, but that's awfully close to where I want to do my journaling. Not going to do it there. I will do it here. See it, it, Seems like it would go well there and there. And let me get, there's already a piece stuck to my tweezers, but it's kind of small, but I'm gonna put it there anyway. Okay, so I think we've got that. Now, I want to somewhat mask where my where my splatters are going to go like for instance I want to do that and I want to do that and of course I want to cover the puppy So I'll do that. And then I'm going to start with pink. Let me get this kind of up so you can see it all. And the camera is kind of turned. I hesitate to move it too much because I've just tightened the screws. It fell out of its holder yesterday. Okay, that's better. I probably should have made that adjustment before I started filming. It, it moved on its own, I'm uncertain. So I'm doing these and they will, um, 
they'll dry to a shimmer. You can't see them now, except on the places they weren't supposed to get. And I'm getting, let, allowing them to get on the stars. Um, that's somewhat intentional in that it kind of looks like tiny stars in front of the bigger stars. And somehow that's what I get. It's that dimensional space sort of look uh, that, that I love in Sarah's original. So I'm going to finish with the gold, and then I'll put some gold in some of the other places, just as accent sprinkles. Whoops. That got a nice big glob, and I don't know that I really like that. Some more. Okay, let's do the big reveal here and see how it looks. Okay, so I definitely get that diagonal look. And then I'll go do just a few. I don't know if I should do the gold. because it's it's doing such large globs. And I also think I'd like to see some white on there. And so I'm gonna do very, a few splats of white in selected areas. Okay, so there, <laughs> that's my puppy dog layout, and I am really happy that I decided to fussy cut that photo that I printed. Um, it was, it was huge, and the, um, there were some things in the background that weren't, uh, it was just a photo my son had taken of her in the living room, and there were some things in the background that weren't interesting to the photo so having her kind of come out of the sky like this uh is is kind of cool i like that so thank you for watching and uh i'll have all of the uh, links to everybody else playing along in the hop and you can go see everybody else's doggy photos or summer photos or dog days of summer stories so enjoy and I'll see you on the next hop. Bye.